Okay, welcome back to DigiBros, motherfucker. We are at the fiery place. And we are gonna go right in there, man. We're gonna get up in its asshole. Up in its asshole. Alright, here's some questions from Ska15Let, which I assume is meant to be Red Scarlet, but yeah, I really don't know. I don't know. Um... First question, will you guys play older 2D games so on this ska. show? Uh, no. <laughs> um, so I have been, and this guy, uh, interested. this actually ties into another, another question this guy asked, because he asked, uh, how is it doing solo Let's Plays, which really doesn't apply to you at all. Yeah. Um, solo Let's Plays oh, are, shit, are, the five minutes are weird oh, for fuck. me, because, g get out of the boat. I gotta get, get boat closer. Go up there. Um. Solo Let's Plays are weird because... What the fuck? Your phone's suddenly blowing up. Oh, hope got off work, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh... So fucking late as hell. Solo Let's Plays are weird because I have to, like, simultaneously come up with topics and be able to keep thinking about them while thinking about the game, oh, no. and I'm not good at it. Yeah. I, uh, just recorded four episodes of an older 2D game that will be coming out probably alongside these episodes, so you already know about this, uh, if you're listening to this video. But, um... You know, I'm trying my hand at it because it's been... When I do record them, they come out better than I expect. I I hate I hate doing them because I hate losing my train of thought. I hate when I can't remember what I was talking about and then, like, I get lost and it yeah. happens constantly. And I'll listen to the episodes back and I'll hear where, like, I started to talk about something and then just totally forgot. But I am a lot better than I thought at just not stopping talking uh -huh. when I'm by myself. Like... You know, for me, it feels like there's a long gap between everything I say, but that's not the case. And after listening to other solo Let's Plays, I am way more talkative than most of them. So, yeah. like, I think I'm probably pretty good at solo Let's Plays. And what inspired me to do it was that I was listening to a solo Let's Play by um, YMS on his Adam Plays channel. Yeah, he, he has lots of long silences and shit. Right, well, because... His are just like uh, like live streams that yep. he you know that he converts into video. But he had one that was like on Banjo Kazooie, and like I watched a bunch of uh, like like several hours of it. And like yeah. even though it was drawn out and stuff, he got into some really interesting topics. Uh -huh. And I was like, man, this is actually interesting. I'm listening to a solo yeah. let's play. I guess it is something I would listen to. Because Hope so. watches uh, all of his stuff. Right. There, oh my, there's no way she watches all of it, dude. dude he she, puts out hours a day. She watches it all the time. I oh mean, my god. Maybe not, like, literally all of it, but he, she, she watches a lot of his uh, Let's Plays. He's, he's got a lot of really interesting opinions. Yeah. And, and, some, and, you know, she'll just have it on background noise and, like, wait for him to get into whatever. Well, cause it, it's cool it because, like... Because he's this. he is a gay furry, yes, and he has very like yeah. diverse tastes, and she enjoys and when people, he talks about stuff like that. Of right? Course. Well, people like bring it up all the time yeah. because they know that about him. They constantly ask for his opinions on stuff like that. Whereas, like for me, you know, I could say a lot of the stuff he's saying, but it's not like something people would think to ask me or that I would think to talk about. You know? Yeah. But because people are so like in enchanted by the idea of a gay furry who's, you know, like, a cool, intelligent guy that they want to ask him all these questions so he gets to talk about all this interesting shit, you know? But, um... But, yeah, so I decided to record some episodes of me playing a 2D game. The problem with Victor is that he does not like 2D games. Well, uh, I, don't, I just can't imagine what I'd play on here. There's plenty of cool... You, you would have... If you liked the game that I'm playing, you would have been able to do it, which is, a uh, well, no point in being coy about it since it's already coming out, but it's a uh, Soul Blazer for the Super Nintendo, yeah. which is one of my favorite games, and very conducive to this style, um, but less so because I'm by myself and trying to, like, play the game and talk at the same time. I die a lot, as the viewers will already be aware. So, Alright, let's go to Whore Island. So, yeah, you might get some 2D Let's Plays from me, but probably right, not really from Victor. I really wanted us to do a lot of Kirby games, but after Kirby 64, like, was kind of yeah, like, mind-numbing to play, weird. then uh, we, we kind of lost the, the fervor for that idea. Uh, who would you like to collab with? I think this can apply to both of us. Could it? Who would you want to work with? Uh. Collaborate with? Uh, is there any, is there any like, 
famous person or celebrity that you think like you would want them in your movies or something like that or people you would want to be in their movies or work uh, with them on a movie never given this any thought at all not particularly you don't have like an actor you really want I mean I want to have Nicolas Cage's death gun in the SAO2 <laughs> movie I mean <laughs> that's obvious Oh, I mean, no. uh, you know, I've talked about the cast of my SAO movie at, at length. So, is it, you know, is it, Kirito would have to be Daniel Radcliffe or um, isn't or he, Elijah Wood. Aren't I mean, they yeah, both old by now? Yeah, but they're forever young, Conrad. Look at those faces. They're adorable. <laughs> you only have so much time. <laughs> Elijah Wood, man. And then, uh, let's see, Klein. So Elijah uh, Wood mostly plays, like, scary psychopaths now. He can be Kirito. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Nicolas Cage is obviously Death Gun. Who's gonna play Asuna? Um... Ellen Page? I mean, she's also forever young, right? <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> oh, Klein God. could be Seth Rogen. You can't have Clyde be Actually, Seth Rogen have and Asuna? not have... <laughs> I'm going to switch Asuna's character to a dude. Asuna is just going to be a dude, and it's going to be a gay relationship. Oh my god. I think that would be more interesting, right? Who would I collaborate with? <laughs> I would collaborate... Huh. That's tough, because I'm not into collabs, really. Me and a... You know, even though me and the Horseshoe guys, we like collaborating on stuff that, like, makes sense for... I guess I should say, we like making shows that are collaborations, right? Like, we do podcasts together, but, like, we've always said that we want to do, like, the plebe and the weeb, which would be, like, a show specifically about being two people, yeah. you know? So, like, I wouldn't want to collab with anyone where we're just doing our normal style in collaboration. Yeah. I've done that with Tommy Oliver just, like, for the hell of it. It's never really... It doesn't add anything, you know? Like, it just feels like two different people doing their own thing in the same video, it's it's rare that like a collab feels like a like it needed to happen and not that it was just something they wanted to do you know, um, so if it was like I'm doing a show with someone like and the context of the show makes sense for that I would love to be like a guest on Game Grumps or on yeah you know, I wouldn't you know, mind doing something with Shia LaBeouf. Like because I feel like he's insane, and he's, he's this expressive I artist. I can't believe you didn't bring him up. I thought he anything. was going to be your Kirito, for sure. I mean, When nah, you said Nick Cage is Death Gun. Because he he feels too much more like a villain these days to be Kirito. He can be the Shia rapey Buffy, guy. Yeah, he should be he like the, be the rapey, rapey guy, guy or something. Like, I don't, I don't think he'd want to be a hero anymore. He can be any of the rapey guys. Alright, so I did... What, I gotta go find the the, the guy now? And then, uh, All right. or the girl, and then I don't have I to bring the girl here I guess that we basically answered shit. that question. Like, we, we didn't really have interesting or answers. Something. I think I had a good answer, because Nicolas Cage has to be Death Gun. Nicolas Cage is also going to be the bad guy from the first arc, too. He's just going to be both. It's going to be the same actor for both All roles. Right. What are some games with a dense world mm. and a nice aesthetic? Obviously, this is targeted at me, because those are the two things I love about games. I would say... The game that, like, in terms of those So being, dense. In terms of those as my interest in games, the game with the most dense world and the best aesthetic is the Minish Cap. Uh-huh. The Legend of Zelda, the Minish Cap. Very dense. Because the the world is all double-layered. Harvey it, There's dense. all the big version and the small version. Yes. And that's what's so cool about that game, is that you'll, like, you'll explore a town, and then you'll go back through that town as the Minish version of Link and find out that, like, from the perspective of the Minish, it's an entirely different place, you know? Um, I've always been a fan of the idea of every nook and cranny is interesting in the world, you know? Everything, every little speck of the world is interesting in some way because it all has a story. I always think of the song by Maps and Atlases, Every Place is a House, you know? Yes. <laughs> that song... And pretending every place is a home. Do -do 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 Highly recommend listening to that song. If you want to hear the craziest fucking tapped guitars you'll ever hear, listen to that song. Um, but anyway, 
I like that idea of every place being a house and every every Are little, saying little that, thing is is cool. That song has crazier tap guitars than the uh, a YouTube video called Craziest Tap Guitar You've Ever Seen. It would probably just be a video of maps and atlases. <laughs> With Peter, five how can it get points? crazier than <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why uh, I was so into the movie um, The Secret World of Arietti, because it was basically the same thing split. as The Minish Cap, where it's like, uh-huh. you know, from the perspective of humans, it's this incredibly ornate house, and from the perspective of little people, it's a whole universe. Like, it's their whole world. They've never seen anything outside of it, and like, you know, they every little thing in that world is something they use, where her fucking hair clip is a a clothespin, you know, that she puts in her hair and it, like, holds all her hair back and it's great. Um, highly recommend that movie as well. Oh, fuck, I don't know. You're okay. <laughs> Lord. So, yeah. There's something on your face. I like that about the Minish Cap and it's the game a is big piece of cheese. beautiful to look at. I love the aesthetic of it because it's sort of like, because it's very bright. And the Game Boy Advance, like, most of the games on it were made extremely bright. And I love the way Game Boy Advance look, games look because of that. Whereas, like, Super Nintendo games were, like, the same kind of pixels and the same... They were, like, drawn the same way, but they usually had darker color palettes because they were being played on CRT TVs. So it's blasting fucking light through them. Whereas GBA games, especially on the original before they had the backlight... I have to be made so you can fucking see them, you yeah. know. So they usually had really bright colors and bright palettes, and uh, when you see that on a computer monitor, especially that shit just lights up. It's crazy, you know. And uh, yeah, Minish Cap oh, is no. beautiful for that reason. Um, oh shit, this is a cool scene where she's possessed by the fucking devil of fucking ocarina of time also has a dense world and a nice aesthetic very dense uh Uh, dark souls yeah dark souls does have a great aesthetic i wouldn't say it's like that that's like when i think of the minish cap it's like this is what i like want more games to look like you know i do think dark souls is a beautiful game um i think demon souls and bloodborne have like more coherent aesthetics I like Bloodborne more, I mean, uh, Dark Souls more than Bloodborne because it has more variety, but, like, yeah. the aesthetic of Bloodborne is definitely fucking gorgeous. Like, it looks cool as shit. It, it just gets tiring to see so much of it. Um, Which it actually doesn't. It's actually awesome the entire time. Uh, whatever, man. But, uh, I watched the whole game and I, I felt it. Whatever, fucking tired. Devil May Cry looks consistent the whole way through. Still looks fucking red. Devil May Cry? Yeah, man. It's the same thing where it's kind of like... the it, aesthetic it's, is really something it's you pay attention to. It's enclosed in one location. Game. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> it's a castle game. Yeah, Don't make right thing. You go into a big castle, you're in there the entire time. It's very evident that you were in one place. Oh, Bloodborne is a similar you, you reminded me, style another where game, you're in one location. Dense World, Great Aesthetic, Resonant Evil. Holy fuck. Uh-huh. First of all, one of the most beautiful games ever. Because Resident Evil is like a, a one... Like, like a flat statement of this is why we shouldn't have totally done away with fixed camera perspective. Yes. Because it totally works for the game. It's another one of those games where, you know, like, like it seems dated, but it, it was intentional that they made it that way. You yes. know? And I, I wouldn't necessarily defend the tank controls because the original game had tank controls. And, you know, some people will say, well, that added to the horror and the new, the GameCube version and the HD remake of the GameCube version, you know, don't have it, I think it still works and is a a fun, scary game, you know. But, like, the fixed camera perspective allowed it, so every shot has, like, very careful lighting, very carefully drawn to fuck with your head, you know, so that you go... You go through different areas and everything is like, oh god, what's around that corner? You know, they they put the cameras in ways that would fuck with you, but while not being frustrating. You know, it never really gets frustrating. It's just, um, because the enemies are sparse and laid out very well. They thought about everything. Um, and it's incredibly dense. Every room has something interesting in it, you know. And you really learn your way around the mansion. So that's a, a perfect example of a dense and aesthetically pleasing world. Um... Likewise, 
while this game will never be made into a full game, PT had the same kind of thing where uh. PT was one hallway that you <laughs> kept walking down, but like every visual detail of the hallway was meant to strike paranoia into you. Like that's what, like you know, PT and, and Silent Hills in general was supposed to be like this collaboration between Kojima and Guillermo del Toro, and like and I don't at Junji Ito. It's impossible to know. No, it was not. Yeah, it was. Junji Ito was involved yeah. in that game? Yeah. I didn't think he was involved in that. I know that Guillermo del Toro is a fan of him, but... Yes, he actually was involved in the game, I believe. Like, fuck me, game. man. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know... I, I believe he was actually involved in writing it, and I know del Toro was saying in an interview that, that he, it was inspired by his aesthetic. Like, they, they, were, they were deliberately trying to make a Junji Ito style most terrifying thing you have ever seen. Like, they wanted to go that extra mile and make it fucking horrifying. Such a shame. Which is so fucking depressing. <laughs> yeah. That it's, ah. Uh, that it didn't get made. Fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know if Del Toro was, like, directly involved in the visual design of PT, of, of that version, you know, but, like, if he was, then that must be why, because they mastered making, like, every little thing that's on the walls or anywhere, yeah. like, most of it doesn't matter, but it all is, like, freaky. Where, like, they put, like, a coat rack just in the place that'll make you think yeah. it looks like a person. Or they put something on the desk in a way that makes it look like, you know, oh, God, what could that be? And so you just, you constantly get paranoid as you walk through these hallways. I don't know if I've talked about that on here, but I've talked about it with Hope, where it's just, like, I feel like in video games they haven't, like, I haven't at least seen a game that reached that level of fucking terror in, like, in, in horror games, where it's just, like, you look at just any fucking Junji Ito monster or body horror thing, it's just the fucking scariest shit you've ever- Like, you can't comprehend how fucking freaky it is. And it's like, how have- Why aren't horror games going the extra mile to look like that? Like, that bad? Like, right. you see some body horror stuff in, like, even Dark Souls and things, but it just never- like, really gets you well, like that. because Junji Ito is the master, you know? Yeah, like, they but it's like, him. you know people have got to be replicating his style, so it's like, right. if you're replicating that style, or can they not go all the way with it? I don't know, maybe it would just be too freaky God, oh, for people I to just, handle. Like, we went to a Junji Ito panel one time, like, I haven't even read any of it, shit, I've just seen the images, and it's just like, oh, oh my God. It's funny, though, because most of his stuff is, like, goofy. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess a lot of it's, like, legit <laughs> horrifying, but, like, a shit, lot of it's dude. just, like, it's so fucked up Yeah, I mean, some silly. of it's, like, very absurd, just, like, yeah. what the fuck did you do? But, like, that is some scary shit. Is this the, like, I can't figure out if, if we're in the second half of this video or the first half. Like, uh -huh. did we just start and that was, or? uh, when I watched, uh, The Thing or whatever, I was like, that, that movie is, has some of the most fucking gruesome... <laughs> horrifying monsters and I'm like yeah. how have they not even in the thing remake it didn't, didn't come nearly as close to vague as creepy well, so it wasn't John Carpenter making the yeah. remake but it's like how do you like the thing why have we not topped remake, that though, you know um yeah I can't figure out if we're at the end of the episode or at the beginning like 10 minutes I feel in. like we're pretty far are we 20 minutes into this video uh, we started. Let's back just go up. ahead and call um, it here. Uh, next time on Digi Bros, maybe this was a short episode, but I, I don't know. I doubt it. Check my phone. No, you know what? This is the start of an episode, I think. Uh -huh. I think we're only 10 minutes in. Because I think that was the first question I asked, right? The dense world and yeah. nice aesthetic was the first question of this episode. Oh, wow. So, because I'm looking through, didn't we end the episode after I said, who would you like to collab with? And then we had that discussion. It wasn't very interesting. And then I said, next time on DigiBros. Dude, I don't know. I, I don't remember. You know what? Maybe that wasn't. Fuck it. Next time on DigiBros. Jesus Christ. I can't fucking make up my mind.